Great. Well, morning, everyone. It's lovely to see so many of us here celebrating that Jesus is alive. This is the greatest day in all of human history that we get to celebrate in today. How good is that? Uh, Now, I was thinking this week, if you were to pick what is the greatest day of your life, I wonder what you'd come up with. Just think for a moment, what would be the greatest day of your life? Was it a holiday where you just had just the best thing, best time that that happened ever? Was it uh, your wedding day? Would it be the birth of a child? Or it could have been when your team's 3-0 down at half time. They come back to 3-3. They win on penalties. Istanbul. But that could just be me. But what is the greatest day of your life? Picture it for a moment. It pales into insignificance compared to the day that Jesus rose from the dead. This is the greatest day ever. Now, we're going to look at the Easter story together. I'm going to need some help. Can I have six people who want to just help me with something? Can I have the first six people who want to come? Come on down, Joel. Right. Can you grab one of these for me? One, two, three, four, five. Six. Right, can you, do you think you could spell out a word that's, that's with those letters? So you might want to have a little look at them together and see what you've got. What do you think that might spell? Well, let's have a look. Let's have a look. So if you, if you line up together and hold them up, line up in a big line across here. So if you go up on there, Joel, if you line up and hold your letters up to everyone, what do you think this might spell? Easter. Now, do you think you can get in the right order to spell Easter? (laughs) Oh, nearly. We need to go over that. That's it. Well done. And come on down. Come on down. We're nearly there. I I tell you what, why don't you move there and then she can stay where she is. And you come on in. That's it. Are we nearly there? Okay, now we're going to try and remember the Easter story by, with these letters. Are you ready? Okay, what do you think the E could stand for? Eggs. Elephants. Do you know what? I, I wondered whether the first thing someone would ask would be eggs. I just didn't think it would be a clergy member. <laughs> so, what do you think the E might stand for? Exegesis. Exegesis, Stu, please. <laughs> this is a family service. Uh, empty tomb. We just heard that Mary has walked and found that the tomb is empty. Now, on the day, she's really sad because she doesn't know that Jesus is risen again. She still thinks he's dead. She's going to anoint his body with some spices. But she finds that the tomb is empty. And she says something really important. She, as she's going along, I wonder if you notice it in the reading, she says, who will move the stone? How will we do that? But she gets there. The tomb is empty. And she's probably thinking... Has someone stolen the body? Has someone moved Jesus? What was going through her head? What would be going through our heads? What do you think the A stands for? Anti-disestablishmentarianism. Isaac, go and wait outside. What do you think the A stands for in the story? At the empty tomb, who was there? There was a... What was that, Trevor? Not yet. There was an angel there. There was an angel there. Now, I know some of us that may have encountered angels, but it's not always your everyday thing. So they probably would have been... Scared. Scared. Shocked. Or shocked, absolutely. Because instead of finding Jesus, they found that the angel, and he wasn't there. And the angel says, he is risen. And them being shocked and scared might be because the body wasn't there. It might be because something holy and amazing was happening. Okay, bear with me on this next one. What do you think the T stands for? To Mary first. (laughs) Right, give me a break. It's been a long week. Um, Jesus appears to Mary first. Now, in the other gospel accounts, what we learn is at first, Mary doesn't recognize Jesus until he does something really beautiful. Do you know what he does? Do you know what he does? He, he says a name. 
At that moment, when Jesus says her name, she suddenly recognizes who Jesus is. And Jesus says our name and calls us the same. So, empty tomb, angels, bit scared, to Mary first, and then the rest of the disciples. What do you think the E stands for? Eschatology. Sorry, I'm just checking what it does stand for, actually. (laughs) E stands for everlasting life. So when Jesus rose, and when Jesus went to be with the disciples, and when Jesus told them what was happening, he said, if you believe in me, you will be saved. You will have everlasting life. You don't have to fear death. That is not the end of the story. But actually, we get to live with God forever with our purpose and a plan for our lives. How exciting is that? What about the R? Shout it louder. Resurrection. The resurrection life. Now, I don't know about you, when we think about heaven, it can seem so far away and so long away. It's something that happens to us when we die, but what about now? There's a wonderful minister called John Wimber who started the the vineyard movement, and he used to have this great phrase that said, following Jesus is is less about pie in the sky when you die and more about steak on the plate while you wait. And what he was trying to say is stop focusing on what's to come and think about now. And we can live this life now. All the things that happen to Jesus can happen to us when we trust him. And in the, in the Bible reading we heard, it means that we can have peace with God. God is our good dad that we can know because of Jesus. We can have power that he fills us to do the things that Jesus did. Do you notice in that it says we will heal the sick. We will drive out demons. We will do these things in his name. Can I just say as well, if you're thinking of picking up snakes or drinking poison, can I just say that that's not endorsed by the Church of England? Uh, That's really kind of metaphorical uh, language there. So if you've read that and go, I can crack on with this, it's probably best not to. But we have the power of Jesus living in us. Haven't they been brilliant? Should we give them a round of applause? (laughs) Wonderful. Let me give you one of these. Thanks, guys. Let me trade you up with one of them. Hey, you wish you helped now, didn't you? <laughs> That'll learn you next time. Wonderful. There you go. Thank you. Well, just as we finish, one thing that I've actually done, I do have one final egg, because, um, and forgive me if you've seen me do this before, but I often find one of the best ways to understand the gospel is to understand it through the medium of chocolate. So I'm just going to tell you how Jesus came, how Jesus died, and how Jesus rose again, all through this Easter egg, because Jesus is fully God. Jesus lived with, and has always lived with God the Father and came to earth. He came. He spent years as a carpenter, and then the last three years of his life, he went into ministry, full-time ministry. He told everyone about God. He said that God is good. God is loving. God can be near you, for you, has a plan and purpose for your life. God is so, so good. And Jesus did some wonderful things, and we've heard them over the course of the last few months as we've looked at Mark's gospel. Jesus walked on water, Jesus healed the sick, Jesus taught people brilliant things, Jesus fed 5,000 people with a packed lunch. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus did some incredible things. But not everyone liked Jesus. Jesus, when he was up north with all the northerners, any northerners in the house? Jesus was loved in Galilee, but when he went to the south, any any southerners in the house? When he entered Jerusalem, he was rejected. He was beaten, he was despised, and it's a bit like this egg, he was crushed. And the Bible says he was crushed for our sins, for our iniquities, and it was placed all upon him. And Jesus was buried. It's a bit like he was just thrown away. And wouldn't it be awful if today, the end of the story was the death of Jesus? But friends, the end of the story is not the death of Jesus, because three days later, Jesus was raised to life and when Jesus is raised to life what happens to him happens to us when we trust him and follow him we have a new risen life we have a new peace with God and guess what it's completely free the great news of the gospel is you don't have to get yourself sorted before you come to God you come just as you are and receive a free gift and it's good and like with any free gift you just need you you just need to take it (laughs) 
Friends, that is how the gospel works. If you're here for the first time in a church building or the first time in a while, please will you hear this really clearly. Jesus loves you. Jesus is for you. Jesus has a plan for your life and it is completely free with no catches, no tricks. Why? Because he has conquered death. And when he did that, we can trust everything he's ever said and all of who he is. Amen? Amen. This is such good news, isn't it? Amen? Amen. He's risen. He's risen. Indeed. Hallelujah. Let's pray together, shall we? 